Debbie McGee nailed an autumnal look this week as she stepped out in London Bridge. The former wife of magician Paul Daniels donned a pair of brown leather knee-high boots for the outing, paired with a textured cardigan and long white scarf. And the outing comes just a day after it was revealed that the 63-year-old is selling off her late husband's iconic archive of illusion tricks, costumes and props for £200,000. Stepping out in the capital, Debbie sported a pair of white jeans with a matching TSHRT, adding a grey ruffled cardigan on top. She finished the look with the knee-high boots, which featured a slightly raised heel sole. Carrying a Louis Vuitton crossbody bag, the former assistant had her hands full with her laptop and phone for the outing. Beaming as she took a stroll, the blonde had her voluminous locks pulled away from her face adding a soft palette of makeup and statement gold earrings. Debbie was married to Paul from 1988 until his 2016 death, with the magician passing away aged 77, after being diagnosed with an incurable brain tumor. And the widow has now decided the time is right to pass her late husband's one-of-a-kind collection on to the next generation of magicians. It includes famous tricks he performed on his hit BBC One show, the biggest collection of magic posters ever sold in the UK, playing cards, wands and his magic top hat. There are also books written by other artists who Daniels used as inspiration. Daniel's geometric solution box, his wife's favorite, is expected to fetch £12,000 alone. The jaw-dropping trick involved her being locked inside the six-feet box while her husband skewered it with swords and several geometric shapes. It featured twice on the The Paul Daniels Magic Show, once in 1985 and again a decade later after the couple honed the presentation on tour. Another illusion which was Daniel's favorite, called The Phantom, based on Phantom of the Opera, is also in the sale. The levitating woman trick includes a bed and four costumes, The Phantom, The Woman and two assistant costumes, and is expected to fetch £30,000. There are also sleight of hand tricks, including a selection of playing cards used by Daniels, appearing flower bouquets, a string of silk hankies and a prediction trick. Daniels collected about 500 vintage posters related to other magicians on his travels around the globe. These are worth £60,000 and span from the late 1800s to the present day. One poster of Chung Ling Su, who is considered one of the premier magicians of all time, has an estimate of £2,500. Su was killed on a London stage in 1918 when his bullet catch trick went wrong. A letter from Harry Houdini to Liverpudlian magician and writer Will Goldstone discussing another magician's trick has an estimated price of £1,200. There are also two rare mystery clocks, created by French watchmaker and magician Jean-Eugène Robert Dean, so named because at first glance they appear to have no workings, which are each worth tens of thousands of pounds. It comes after Debbie made up with her late husband's son after they had a furious public row over the magician's estate. The dancer was called a false witch and told she was only good for a job in McDonald's by Paul Jr., 61, in the months after his father died in 2016. But five years on from the star's death aged 77 from a brain tumor, Debbie said she's on talking terms with her stepson and is not holding grudges about the past. Debbie met her husband in 1979 when she got a job performing in his summer show in Great Yarmouth. She became his regular assistant, appearing alongside him on his TV show which ran from 1979 to 1994. 
The show regularly attracted audiences of 15 million in the UK and was sold to 43 countries. Despite an age gap of 20 years the couple became an item and married in 1988. The Magic Collection has been stored at the couple's home in Henley-on-Thames, Berkshire, since his death. Debbie said she feels now is the right time to part with it. The greats of the magic world are expected to flock to special auction services in Newbury, Berkshire, to get their hands on items owned by the godfather of magic. Debbie said, I'm never going to use the tricks again and I don't look at these things. Before now I couldn't really let anything go apart from some things to his sons, but it seems unfair of me to hold on to these things without sharing it. There's a lot of magicians around the world that collect magic things like Paul did and he always had this feeling that you have a time owning something and then it's time for somebody else to own it. At first it was such an emotional wrench but now I'm actually getting some pleasure from going through everything. It's been cathartic. The illusions are things I did and have memories of when I did it and they are all one-offs. The geometrics was my favorite illusion to do. That's quite a wrench to let go of but where would I put it? There's also the phantom trick, based on the phantom of the opera, where the girl, me, was levitated. With that we are selling the whole scene, a bed, my costume, the phantom costume and two assistants. It was such a big spectacle. We performed it on the TV show, at the Grand Order of Water Rats Ball and let Paul's son, who is also a magician, do it for Ben and Teller. There were things I came across that I didn't even know he still had, a trick he used for master classes in America. I found a letter from Houdini inside a book, I didn't know he had it. He also had an amazing book collection, when I was going through them I thought it's no wonder he had the knowledge he had. Lots of them have got book stamps so you can see they have been passed on to different magicians, it's so fascinating and I think it's great for younger magicians being able to get hold of this knowledge. I think some of the items will be used by magicians, others will just go to collectors. I know David Copperfield is interested in buying some for his museum in America so they won't be used but a lot of people will get to see them. Paul wasn't just a legend in England, he was known all over the world. There wasn't anybody else that did the amount of TV shows we did. Paul's specialness, apart from his charisma, was how quickly he could pick up tricks and make them look good. Most magicians will practice things for up to two years before showing them in public, doing the show we would have maybe four days to prepare, if we were lucky. Paul would have loved the fact other people will own something of his. Thomas Forrester, director of SAS, said, We are honored to be selling Paul's collection. He really was the seminal magician of the 20th century and for many, like me, who grew up watching him on the TV, he brings back lots of happy memories. Paul brought magic to the masses and was a fabulous entertainer and his collection is testament to his successful and sustained career. It's a real once-in-a-lifetime auction. You just have to Google Geometrics and you can watch the whole trick being performed. Some of these tricks and illusions are works of art. We have one of the last prototypes Paul made, a magic table which is not finished. I'm not allowed to know how it works because I'm not a magician. It's all fascinating and really rare for something like this to come to auction. The Paul Daniels collection will be sold on November 23rd and 24th.